In this video, we are going to take a look at soft body blueprint parameters and how they control particle and constraint generation. There's two different kinds of soft body blueprints in OBI, surface blueprints and volume blueprints. Surface blueprints use particles to sample the surface of the mesh, while volume blueprints sample the entire volume of the mesh. Both have the same parameter set. However, surface blueprints are a lot cheaper to simulate since they generate less particles, and you will find yourself using them more often. Let's make a soft body using this mesh. To do that, we need to generate a blueprint first, so right-click on a project folder, create OB surface blueprint. OB will need to read vertex data from the mesh to be able to generate the blueprint. So if your mesh isn't marked as readable in the import settings, such as this one, OB will detect this and optionally will fix it for you. Then you just click generate once and enter blueprint edit mode. Before we get started with blueprint parameters, a quick sanity check. Turn on mesh rendering in your visualization options and make sure that the mesh looks exactly as it should. If it's not visible or it looks distorted, you might have incorrectly exported it. Check our other video on mesh and transform export problems to fix this. The link is in the description. Assuming the mesh looks OK, let's get started with parameters. All parameter values are expressed in mesh space. You will need to regenerate the blueprint for any changes you've made to the parameters to be applied. The scale parameter will apply a scale to your mesh before generating the blueprint. This can be useful if you want to use the same mesh to generate blueprints of different sizes. The single most important parameter is particle radius. This controls how large particles are and in turn the total amount of particles used to sample the mesh. In this case, a value of 0.1 generates less particles than we'd like. As you can see, uh, the particles are the small uh, gray dots here. So uh, probably we'd need to reduce it to 0 0.05, click generate, and as you can see that generates many more particles in the surface of the mesh. If we used a larger value, for instance 0 0.2, then less particles would be generated. The next parameter is particle overlap. This controls the percentage of overlap allowed between particles. By default, particles will only be able to overlap by 20%. If we wanted to reduce the amount of gaps in the surface, which you can see by enable particle visualization here, uh, we could use a larger particle overlap, for instance 0.5. then you would see that particles are uh, more clamped together. The next parameter is shape smoothing. Shape smoothing performs Laplace and smoothing on the particles after generating them. This has the effect of smoothing the surface and slightly shrinking it, which is beneficial in many cases. If you want particles to be placed exactly at the surface of the mesh, then set this parameter to zero. By now, you should have noticed that particles have an ellipsoidal shape and that they are oriented to match the surface of the mesh as closely as possible. To do this, each particle analyzes a small patch of the mesh around it and then it tries to mimic its shape and orientation. The anisotropy neighborhood parameter controls the size of this patch. Use a value of zero if you don't want to use anisotropy at all. This will result in perfectly spherical particles. Max anisotropy controls the maximum amount of deformation a particle can undergo to try and mimic the surface of the mesh. Large values will result in extreme ellipsoidal shapes. For instance, if we use a value of 10, particles will become pretty much flat and disk shaped. If we use a smaller value, for instance 2,
particles will become rounder in shape. Setting this parameter to zero will also result in completely spherical particles. The soft body simulation in OB is performed by linking each particle to other nearby particles. Each group of interlinked particles is called a shape matching constraint or a soft cluster. You can visualize the cluster network in your blueprint by enable, enabling shape matching constraints in the visualization options. Every particle will be linked to other particles within the soft cluster radius. You should adjust this parameter so that the cluster network doesn't look too dense, like this one, but there aren't any gaps in it either. If you make the network too dense, each particle will be connected to many other particles, making the simulation too expensive. If you make the network too sparse, like this, parts of the soft body might detach from it at runtime. In extreme cases, this can make it look like a triangle puddle in the floor. So in this case, I am going to use 0 0.1 and that looks just right. Once you're happy with your soft body blueprint, assign it to a soft body component and don't forget to bind the skin to it. This is all for this video, see you in the next one.